If you watched my Garmin Vertex review, then you will have heard me talk about glances. If you haven't watched it, I will leave it linked up here and down here. So what exactly are glances? Each one will give you a snapshot of information. Think of them a little bit like widgets, where with widgets you'll only get one per page, with glances you can have up to three. Each glance will give you a snapshot of quick information and then when you tap into them, you're gonna get a little bit more detail. I'm gonna be doing my walkthrough on the Epics, but they are not exclusive to the Epics and will also be available on something like this. This is the Venue 2, a review coming up on that shortly. If it's up when you watch this video, it will be linked up here and down here. The order that the glances appear on this walkthrough, again, is not set in stone. This is just how I have it set up. You can, of course, hit the edit button and rearrange both the order of the glances on the list and actually what ones you want to see. So if you want to get rid of them all, then you can do that also. Glances can be accessed by either swiping up or down on a touchscreen device or using the up and down buttons on a button device or whichever combination works for the device you're on. There is a slight difference depending on the device and they mostly work the same regardless of whether you have a touchscreen or button configured watch. So let's dive in. First, at the top of my list is weather. Weather will give you the current weather, temperature, precipitation, and cloud cover. Then once selected, you get an additional five pages. The first is everything I just mentioned, as well as a feels like temperature, a wind speed, and direction. Page two gives you an hourly forecast for the next 11 hours. Page three is a daily forecast for the next four days. Page four is a 12 hour temperature trend, and page five shows you the air quality. After weather on my list, I have sunrise and sunset times. If you tap on this one, it's gonna give you a graphical representation of whereabouts you are in the day based on the time of day, and this then means you can see how much daylight is actually remaining. This is alongside the specific sunrise and sunset time. Times. Underneath them, you'll also get twilight times. If you go down, you can go back in time and see previous days. And if you go up, you can actually see into the future. But don't spoil it for me, because I like to be surprised. Next on the list is VO2 max. At a glance, you will get an overall rating of your VO2 max and a current 5K prediction. Once selected on page one, you will see when this was last updated. On page two, you can scroll through your race predictor so you can see 5K, 10K, half marathon and full marathon predictions. And each one of those has a graph for your progression over the last four weeks. Moving further down the list is your training status. At a glance, this is your overall status. Then once you select it, there are an additional five pages. Page one adds load focus. This gives you some guidance guidance on what you should be doing. If you hit the icon in the right hand corner you'll get some additional coaching which should help you kind of follow what they're recommending. Page 2 shows you your VO2 max for the week and again if you click on the icon in the top right you'll get some context for that. Page 3 is your 7 day load. Again additional information available if you click the icon. Page 4 is your 4 week load focus. Again additional tips available and page 5 is your recovery time. The next glance down I have here is your last activity. You can see the icon for what the activity was so in this case it was running. The distance covered and the time. Obviously this will differ depending on the activity. Then when you tap on it, it will take you into that particular activity where obviously the metrics will be based on whatever it was. So if it's running, you're going to see all your running stats. If it's swimming, you're going to see the stats for that, etc, etc. If you want to see other activities, you can scroll through the list and you can tap on them and see the metrics for those. Next up is your steps. Here you can see your current steps against your target. If you go into this, you can see this on a distance graph for the day, number of steps across the week with an average and distance across the week with an average. Next up is heart rate. Assuming you have this sensor turned on all the time, it will show you your current heart rate. Two further pages will show you a graph of the previous four hours with highs and lows, as well as for the previous seven days alongside an average. Moving on to body battery, you will see your overall figure as well as gains and losses. Inside, this will be displayed on a graph with high and low points since midnight and on page two with stress for the last four hours. Sleep tracking shows you the total time asleep, gives you an overall score and a visual of the sleep states. You also get an average quality rating and type of sleep. Pulse Ox will show your overall percentage. This will be alongside a miniature graph. And again, this is assuming that you have it set to measurements 
throughout the day. If you haven't got these sensors turned on, then you're probably not going to get a reading on the glance. If you select it, you will get an expanded graph and a new reading will begin. Scrolling down to page two will give you your history for the previous week. The calendar will show you any upcoming events with additional events displayed in a list alongside suggested workouts. Notifications will show you a roundup of each type of notification. So if you've received a bunch of calls, then you're gonna see how many, a bunch of messages, you're gonna see how many of those, a bunch of emails, you get the picture. Then you can go in and read them, dismiss them, etc. Music. In this case, Spotify will show you the current track with the time played and remaining, and then you can launch into the music app to pick up where you left off. ABC or altimeter, barometer and compass will actually show you all three in just that thin slither which is pretty cool. You can see the compass is moving as I do and the altimeter and barometer indicators are underneath. When you go into it, you will see an expanded version of the same thing. If you scroll down, you can see a graph of your altitude for the last four hours, as well as your current altitude. And there is an option to go back even further using the options menu in the top right hand corner, as well as calibrate the device and change some settings. Scroll down a bit further and you can see the last six hours of atmospheric pressure. And again, you can go back further, calibrate and change some settings. Finally, at the bottom, you have the compass screen on its own. You can also have these as individual glances if you so wish. Altitude acclimatization will only show at 800 meters, which I'm not currently at, therefore there is no reading. When it does appear, you will see altitude corrected values for your average pulse oximeter reading, respiration rate, and resting heart rate. All of this will be for the last seven days. Alternate time zones. This displays the current time of day in additional time zones. You can add these by scrolling through the map on screen, then selecting the place you want to add. You can also change the name if you want to. Calories. This will show you active and rest calories, burnt and the split between them visually. When selected, an additional four pages will add total calories burnt as well as a projected total on page one. Page two will show calories burnt against the number of activities and any additional active calories burnt. Page three will give you active calories for the week with an average and page four will give you a total calories for the week with an average. Floors climbed shows you the number of floors climbed does what it says on the tin. This will be against whatever goal you have set and it will show you on this progress bar whereabouts you are. You can then see this across the previous 12 hours and seven days with an average. What I would say is that I don't think this is amazingly accurate. I know when I'm running up and down the stairs inside the house, sometimes it picks up a floor, sometimes it doesn't. You can see two clear spikes on Tuesday and Friday. This isn't because I was up and down the stairs all day. These are the days that I ran. So clearly it's picking up something in the altitude change because actually I run up some quite big hills. So I'm assuming that it's counting those as floors climbed. Garmin Coach will show you any scheduled workouts assuming that you've signed up for a workout program. You can do this in the training plan section of Garmin Connect. If you want to know more about Garmin Connect, I will leave a video linked up here and down here where there's a full walkthrough of that. Next up, golf. Golf will display the scores and stats for your last round which for me was probably more than five years ago. Weirdly, it hasn't actually picked it up. Health snapshot will display the last time a reading was taken, and then you can either select it to take a fresh one or look at previous sessions. It will take a reading for two minutes and give you an average for heart rate, respiration, stress, and heart rate variability or HRV. History is exactly that. You can see your activity history for the last 30 days with the total number and time. You can then look at individual activities, records and totals for running, cycling and swimming. Intensity minutes tracks your time spent doing moderate or vigorous activity for the week so far on the left against your weekly goal on the right with progress shown on the bar. If you open it up, in addition to what is on the quick information, you will also get a figure for the day with a graph. Scroll down from there and you will see a graph for the week with a daily average, 
scroll one more and you will see the split of activity between moderate and vigorous for the week and then on the last page you will get a countdown split of minutes required to reach your weekly goal below your intensity minutes you will see your last activities and this functions exactly like history so you might decide you're going to have last activities and not history or history and not last activities or you might be mad and want both. If you did add all the glances available to you, then there would be a fair amount of repetition. Take, for example, the ABC function. You can have this either combined into one glance or you can have three separate glances for each one. Respiration will show you your current respiration rate. That's breaths per minute with a seven day average when you open it up. It can also take you to the breath work activity. Stress displays your current level of stress and gives you an overall stress rating. Either rest, low, medium, or high. You can then see this over the last four hours plotted on a graph split between the four categories with time spent in each and across the last seven days with an average. Temperature will give you a current temperature and then the temperature over the last four hours. Although you can scroll further back in time if you so wish. There are a couple of other glances available depending on some additional accessories like the Viber cam and zero laser devices. Again just bear in mind that the particular order that I've just gone through is not set in stone. You can set your own order as well as remove any of those glances that you're not interested in. If you've got any more questions about glances let me know in the comments below if you want more of this type of content then hit that subscribe button thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one